I'm Walt, and this is Delta Astrophotography. I've always wanted to photograph the Helix Nebula. Now, the Helix is a planetary nebula, which has nothing to do with planets. It's actually a star that's died, but not in a red supergiant blowing up, going supernova kind of way, but more in a smaller star running out of fuel and just spilling its guts out into the cosmos. Now, these kind of nebula can sometimes look like an eye, and that's exactly what this one looks like. Some people even call it the Eye of God, but I know it is something else. You know of what I speak. A great eye, lidless, wreathed in flame, the Eye of Sauron. I'm going to take a picture of it, so join us in today's episode of Walter Gets Hopelessly Lost in the Woods. <laughs> The Helix Nebula, I would not consider to be a beginner target. I mean, it could be if you just happen to live in the right place and just have all the right gear, but for me, it's always been a bit of a challenge. And that's for two main reasons. One, it's pretty low in the sky, and the farther north you go, the lower in the sky it gets. So this could be a huge challenge for people living in places like Canada or the UK. But even here in Mississippi, it's kind of tough for me because I'm having to shoot you know, through buildings or the light pollution dome of a nearby city. For those of you in the Southern Hemisphere, I'm sure you'll be just fine. The second reason this is a bit of a challenge for me is because this target's pretty small. I mean, if you go out there with like a 250 millimeter camera lens or telescope, it's just gonna be a tiny dot in there. So I'm, I'm thinking somewhere between 600 and over a thousand millimeters to really get this good and in the frame. Let's go ahead and jump into Stellarium on the computer and kind of see where the helix is going to be and what kind of equipment we might need to use to photograph it. Okay, we're looking southeast at about 8.45 at night, right after it gets dark. And I'm going to move the mouse all the way to the left of the screen, the search window, search for the helix nebula. And there it is in brackets. It's just coming up in the southeast. Now let's follow the path throughout the night. And it's just slowly moving across the southern sky. Gets to its peak, its highest, kind of right around direct south. And it starts to set right around four o'clock in the morning. Now, although it is up all night, it does not stay very high at all it's usually hugging the horizon for me here in Mississippi. And because it's so close to the light pollution dome, this is probably gonna force me to use narrowband filters. Let's back it up and get a closer look at the helix itself. And I'm gonna turn this framing icon up here to see what it looks like in my camera. This is the current setup I'm gonna use, but let's see what it looks like with maybe a smaller setup. Sensors, let's do maybe a crop sensor DSLR. I'm gonna select telescopes and let's choose a telescope that's around 250, 275 millimeters. That'd be my Radian 61. And as we can see with that setup, it's like a tiny dot. <laughs> You'd really have to do some major cropping to see any detail. So here's what it would look like with my ZWO294MC Pro camera, a Celestron C11 with a 6.3 reducer. That fills the frame quite nicely, but there's also this stuff above the eye shape that I'd like to keep in here. And honestly, I want a little more cropping room, so I'm gonna go with something else. This is what it's gonna look like with my current setup. And I wish I could somehow split the difference between this and the last photo, but that's all the equipment I have. So this is the setup I'll be using to shoot the Eye of Sauron. This is the Ascar 103 APO. It's a 700 millimeter focal length telescope with an F ratio of F6.8. This has been my main telescope all year. I've used pretty much nothing but this, except for when I'm doing nightscapes. The camera is a ZWO ASI 294MC Pro. That's an older model camera, but it's working just fine for me. Now, I, you can still use a DSLR with this target, but I highly recommend an Astro modified DSLR. There's a lot of hydrogen alpha light in this target, and you're gonna wanna be able to pick that up. And speaking of hydrogen alpha, this is an Altair six nanometer dual narrowband filter that really just picks up hydrogen alpha and oxygen three. 
It's gonna help cut through the light pollution, but also separate my target from the background sky and make my stars nice, small, and tight. So I guess you could compare this filter with an Optolong L Extreme, but I really like Altair's filters. The entire rig is sitting on top of a Skywatcher EQ6R Pro mount. It is a go-to mount. It's, it's pretty awesome. And I just can't afford to get into the Strain Wave Cool Club yet. <laughs> For auto guiding mounted on top of the telescope is the ZWO 30F4 mini scope and the ASI 120MMS. This little auto guiding setup does just fine with this telescope. And finally, mounted to the back of the telescope, I've got the ASI Air Mini that I'm gonna use to control everything on here from slewing to my target to auto guiding to actually taking the photos through the camera. And I've also got this Pegasus Pocket Power Box Micro. Now this actually powers everything on here from the mount to the camera to the ASI Air. It also has two RCA dew heater ports so I can power my dew heaters and it's got a humidity sensor on top so I can use that to turn the dew heaters on and off if I don't need them. Well, old Gandalf just called and he needs me to go down south to Mordor to take a picture of the Eye of Sauron to confirm that the Dark Lord has indeed returned. So, see you in Mordor. Finally made it to Mordor and the evil here is far too overwhelming. I'm gonna have to go back home and shoot this from a distance. When I set up at home, I typically like to set up in the eastern side of my house so I can shoot behind me to the east and in the north or on the western side so I can shoot back west and north. But the Helix Nebula is in the south back that way and it's fairly low on the horizon. So I have all this to shoot through. So I end up in this field across the street and back behind me is a clear, unobstructed view of the south. This is a perfect place to shoot. Except it's not looking so good. Well, it finally happened. The clouds have parted after two weeks. And just look at this beautiful blue sky. And it's nice and cool outside. It almost feels like fall. This is, this is making me so happy. I'm gonna go ahead and get set up. We're doing this tonight, finally. So it's getting close to nine o'clock. I came out here about an hour ago and set up and I did something I hadn't done in a while. I actually polar aligned my mount manually using the polar scope. So I'm about to polar align with the ASI Air and see how accurate my manual polar alignment really was. All right, here we go. Let's see what these numbers look like. Holy crap, that's way better than I've ever done with the ASI Air, and I did this in like 30 seconds. I think I've kind of forgot how great manually polar aligning is. I don't even think I'm gonna touch that. I'm gonna leave it alone. I'm just gonna hit finish. It's getting kind of windy out. I hope that doesn't affect my guiding too much tonight, but all right, I'm gonna go ahead and slew to a star, maybe on Terry's, and go ahead and focus the scope. It's a little bit low on the horizon, but I think it'll still be okay. I'm gonna go ahead and slip on my Batonoff mask and take a picture. Well, that's pretty damn close. All right, that looks pretty good to me, so I'm gonna go ahead and take my Batonoff mask off, and we're gonna go ahead and slew to the Helix Nebula. All right, I got it centered up. I'm gonna go ahead and start the auto guiding. I'm gonna tap my auto guiding window up here. Let's just clear out any previous calibration data. I'm gonna turn out my light and we're gonna get this started. 
All right, we're guiding. Not the best guiding numbers, but not too bad for a windy night and being pointed almost close to the horizon. They're gonna improve throughout the night. So we're gonna get started and actually take some pictures. I'm gonna back out of the auto guiding here. One thing I forgot to mention is down at the bottom, you can see I've cooled my camera to zero degrees Celsius. You know, during the winter months, I'll get it a lot colder, but during the summer months, I stick to zero degrees to make sure my battery doesn't die throughout the night because it's trying so hard to cool. That being said, it's kind of a cool night tonight, and I probably should have done a colder temperature, but you know what, it doesn't matter. We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take some pictures now. I'm gonna change from preview to auto run. Click the hamburger icon under auto run. Clear out anything I've done in the past. Hit the plus sign. We're doing light frames. I'm doing exposure length 300 seconds. You don't necessarily have to do that, especially if you have a faster lens or telescope. But for my F6.8 telescope, I like five minutes or 300 seconds. The default gain of this particular camera I'm using is 120. And I'm gonna repeat this, let's just say 60 times to be hopeful. I'm really hoping to just get 40. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna turn, make sure Meridian Flip is turned on. I don't want the ASIR to shut down when it's done because I wanna take calibration frames later, but I do want it to go to home position when it's done, so make sure that's checked. I'm gonna back out of here and we're just gonna hit start. Let's go. I was able to photograph the Helix for three nights in a row for a total of nine hours and 45 minutes of integration time. Now I think I'm gonna take a break from it and focus on other targets, and I'll probably come back to it around this time next year and add maybe another nine to 10 hours on it, and it's just gonna grow with me more every year. I stacked and processed all of my data in a program called PixInsight, and I'm very happy with the way things turn out. I did not expect those colors to just come out naturally like that, but they did, and I'm loving it. So that about wraps it up, guys. Thank you so much for watching once again, and uh, if you liked the video, let me know in the comments or leave me a like. Definitely subscribe if you're not already. Um, I just recently had a random canoe trip, and I've already made a video about that as well, so that's coming out soon. Canoe trip, astrophotography, yeah, they both went hand in hand. You'll see. Special shout out for my patrons on Patreon. Thank you all so much for supporting me in this crazy thing we all do. And if anybody out there wants to support this channel and chat with us on our Discord server, well, I'll leave a link to the Patreon in the description below. All right, folks, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. So as always, stay spacey, clear skies, watch out for snakes. See you in the next one.